Hello and welcome to another episode of Sonic and Knuckles. Host Darby Shadow, we have no guests for this episode today. It seems that everyone's busy, and let's get to it. The Flying Battery Zone Act 2. The Flying Battery Zone Act 2, uh, it's not much of a complicated stage. It's designed to show much of the loops and slopes and much of the acceleration from Sonic. You can either do this really fast and hit in so little seconds, but I think I didn't do much as well because uh, I was trying to look for the Chaos Emeralds, but I have a difficult time trying to find Chaos Emeralds in most of these stages in Sonic and Knuckles. I don't know why. I, f I find that level design is brilliant as always, but it's just so difficult to try and find the Chaos Emeralds. I did have a good time in the past trying to find Chaos Emeralds for Flying Battery Zone, but I didn't have any luck in this game, at this episode I think. I think Sandopper Zone is pretty much where I get my next Chaos Emerald. But anywho, there's not much new enemies in this level as seen from Act 1. The capsules is gone now, you don't really see much of those little gimmicks. And there's much checkpoints scattered around the area. So that's pretty good to actually make it more, more easier. And yeah, there is much more strict platforming, but as I said before, you're going to see much of the deliverance of speed if I take that platform. I'm not sure if I do take the normal speed element platform, but I do a good bet, I guess. But anyway, I am going to use the flame shield, and the flame shield is pretty much simple as I said in the first episode with J. That all you got to do is use A to jump and A again to fling yourself into the direction you want. It's protective against fire elements, so it's really good in Lava Reef Zone. Not really that much of benefit in this stage, because as shown there, like it's, it's lots of spikes, lots of stuff that will try and avoid you, and it's not that great. But I think I'm deciding to use the upper route platforms. If you go down the bottom route, that's where the speed lies. Um, I was trying to find more chaos samples in this episode, and I just could not find the special stages really. So that's why this stage, well, for Mushroom Hill from last episode, that was pretty long. I took and flying batteries. Uh, hopefully, in the next episode, the final episode, might be episode three, or it might be another fourth episode. I take the other stages much more faster because I do collect the Chaos Emeralds already. But I'll give you a surprise if I do actually use Super Sonic or not. But yeah, much more power ups, elements, and healthy amount of rings to actually just build up your score in this game for Flying Battery. So, Flying Battery Zone is very useful to actually get life ups. And it's got lots of rings, as I said much more power-ups and checkpoints. The checkpoints are very useful because that you can actually collect more rings and the checkpoints to actually gather up more lives. So if you're having any difficulties with this part or should I say Sandopolis which I had a huge problem with because I can never have a clean run through in Sandopolis and there's always something that's always gonna tie me in and this is kind of not my cup of tea really. So with Sandopolis is gonna be the next act and I just really want Flying Battery just to last as long as possible really. Not really a big fan of Sandopolis. But yeah, from tackling from the first episode, I might as well just give a bit of an opinion of Mushroom Hill, I guess. Mushroom Hill is an alright opening stage. I wouldn't say it's the best out of the classic games, I'd still say probably Emerald Hill, the best, or Angel Island. But yeah, Mushroom Hill is pretty original and a lot of people say that Mushroom Hill is very great if people want to test out the mechanics of Sonic because there's lots of slopes and hills and gains momentum from reaching up to higher platforms and it's pretty cool. But as I said before, there's lots of restraints of platforming, there's lots of vines that try and pull you back and it's pretty frustrating at times. Bosses are quite good in Mushroom Hill. I do enjoy that like, actual run, run and smack. It's kind of like the Sonic Advance bosses, I guess. That's what they try to implement much in the Sonic Advance games, is the runaway bosses, which was quite a cool feature in that 
two D in those two D games in the future, which we will probably do. Up, oh, that's pretty cool. And the second boss, it was I can remember. Actually, I can't really remember for now, but for the second boss, it was alright. And actually, it was, it was, I think it was both one of the bosses. Yeah, they were both one of the bosses in Mushroom Hill. One with just a normal bad Nick, and the other one with Doctor Robotnik riding in his robot or machine. Yeah. Overall, it's a joyful experience, and that's really it for Mushroom Hill. And back again, we're in another special stage. I think I'm bluffing this special stage. Yeah, <laughs> it's because that, out, as I said before in the first episode, that it's much more trivial and much more tricky. It's not in terms of hardness. It's just that I wasn't expecting that to happen because I haven't played this game for a very long time. The last time I actually played this was when I actually downloaded it on the marketplace or Xbox Live because this will live, relive old experience of my parcel like yeah so and we're into the second X boss this one is hmm, it kind of gets the element from Sonic 2 Sonic 2's boss Ring Fortress boss when you're in that little room and I said before that this one and the Ring Fortress 2 boss is in Sonic Adventure's Sky Deck in part of the level design because if you go with Sonic and right up to the cannon when you shoot the rocket to the cannon and you go to the left you actually see the top of the plane because Sky Deck's supposed to be kind of like the Ring Fortress zone a bit trying to copy the elements and yeah with that boss as I just completed right now all you just really gotta do is this wait for that your space to close down so small and just keep on trying to avoid the beams you don't really have to hit the thing at the top if you want to but I just did but yeah as you saw I just died a couple of seconds ago because I didn't my spin dash wasn't just going right and I didn't see how fast I was going in the rolling and I am waiting for the second part of the second act two boss and this one is a bit more trickier well depends on what you use because as I said before that I am pretty much going to use the technique as I said that makes any boss easy in this game I think it's just double tap A and he gets a protective type of shield around him Sonic and also once you actually hit him with that protective uh, shield he actually rebounds a bit more further so it actually gives you a bit of more safety. I'm not sure if that element was in Sonic Generations. If you can double tap A with um, Classic Sonic as a moveset. Because I've only just completed the game and I've been told that in Sonic Generations that they pretty much got every element from the past Sonic games and you can use them in power-ups. Classic Sonic and Modern Sonic. And I was wondering if they actually did that in Sonic 3. But... They did put that in Sonic Advance. I do know that for sure. Pretty much, the elements they did in Sonic Advance was from this game and from the adventure games because the adventure games had a bit of normal moveset, like new movesets like the three dash punch from Knuckles, the spin attack for Tails, and yeah, Advance pretty much borrowed from all them techni uh, power ups and abilities and did Sonic Advance series like that. With a bit of twists in there guess but yeah we are now into Sandopolis zone Ugh, I had problems with recording this by the way because Fraps was being a jerk in this so expect to see kind of frame losses and whatnot in this stage as well well at the beginning part and yeah I do find a special stage luckily in Sandopolis zone now, to be honest, I always find this special stage in Act 2. It's much more easy to find special stages than that. But in Act 1, it was quite difficult for me because of the actual level design and terrain of Sandopolis because there's too much sand that's dragging me in, like seeing it now, just pulling me down. And I just really wanted a nice, smooth, easy wide, but... Hey. 
so far, I think we've got six chaos symbols, and we're just looking for one more. And definitely, I get a special stage. Well, get into a special stage in San Doppler, so. so that's pretty cool. So what's new about San Doppler Zone that's different to the other stages? Well, as you can see here, you see much more of the pushing element. Well, it first started in for Angel Island Zone when you have to push those rocks. Have a bit of experimental thought to actually gain the invincibility. This one, it's much more to get from one platform to the other with, uh, from not jumping all into the sand. So it's much more heavy base platform in those parts, but it's pretty cool. I kind of like those elements. I just kind of just hate when I just kind of be so impatient and I have to drop into the sand. It's just a tough nightmare at times. Just jumping up and down and then that robot trying to jump at me. It's never did like that. I never, that's the thing. Also, I've, I've seen it from another game but I can never picture what game that actual robot design was. Because I definitely know that there was a another robot design. Oh, oh, wait. Now I know. It was from Sonic 1's Scrap Brain Zone. And it's just a normal worm. Well, I think it was probably in another stage, but yeah. But, there's much more enemies, as I said before, is that it's got some of the environmental features as enemies. Like, sometimes you try and push it. He's he's really friendly as well. He won't do anything. The only thing you can just do against him is the spin dash. You can't jump on him. Because, yeah, as seen there. So you, the only thing you can just do is roll or spin dash into him. I don't know if you can use the protective shield because I never did use that. And yeah, this is the part where it goes so crappy in frame. I don't know what happened, but perhaps was really being a jerk to me around this time. But there's there's more like problems, but it's, it gets much more smooth in that too. That for at least. And yeah, collected another shield to actually help my way progressing through the stage much more faster. Always, always, always keep your shield with you in stages like this. Because it makes the stage much more easier and much more an enjoyable ride to actually go through. If you use normal Sonic with no shields, it's just going to be like a drag for experience, I guess. That's why I never kind of liked this stage out of the bunch in this game. Well, this game is still, this um, stage is pretty cool. But it's my least favorite to actually just go and play through again. Even Death Egg Zone, I would actually enjoy to actually play through that because the music is brilliant in that zone. And I was so excited to use those um, music from Sonic and Knuckles as well, the soundtrack to actually play in some of the stages for Sonic Generations. I think the Death Egg Zone music is great with the actual Sonic 2 boss that you get to play with Classic Sonic. I think it was quite good with that. And one thing I wanted to talk about as well is Sonic and Knuckles remix soundtrack by Maxi the Man. And Maxi the Man, well, he's starting to sell his tracks, sell his remix tracks on YouTube, and I think it's a good idea. But at the same time, it's me that has to go pay for it. Maxi the Man, if you're watching this, I am a guy that does not want to buy your remix. Your remixes are awesome. Yo, everything you've done for the Sonic games remixes are all great. I love them all. My favourites, I will point out Sky Sentry, Death Egg, uh, that special stage for Sonic 2, I think that was brilliant. You did, you did a mix of Sonic 2 and Level Select Sonic 2. I think that was a great idea and hopefully you will Actually, I might as well buy it. I might as well buy it. I might as well support you. That's what I was thinking now because there's no point of your work being wasted for nothing. And yes, there are other projects. I think there's like the Chaos Project that's still on YouTube. Well, that's free, but there's the only song I do like from that project is... It was... What's it called? Marble Gardens. I think that one was pretty good. Oh yeah, Marble Gardens are pretty good for Maxi the Man as well. But anyway, <clears throat> now I can finally be Super Sonic in Sonic Knuckles after the third stage. And yeah, as soon as I lose that shield, I am definitely going to turn into Super Sonic. The only, um, I think, downfall 
with Supersonic in the stage, is down to the Act 1 boss. Because the Act 1 boss can only be defeated by making him jump into the sand or you hit him into the sand. So, it's pretty bad. Guess. But yeah. Supersonic is not like Hypersonic. Supersonic, you can only just jump. Hypersonic, you can use the actual spring or projectile when you're in the air. It's kind of similar to homing attack, but the thing is, it's not homing onto anything. It's homing into the actual direction you push. So it's a great feature to use in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. That's why I did enjoy Hypersonic a lot. But Supersonic's cool anyway. But I do prefer the design from Supersonic or Sonic 2. Not Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. It's kind of gone kind of sketchy, you know. Super, like The color for Sonic 2's Supersonic was just normal, fresh, clean, and they didn't really have to kind of emphasize the color a lot. And uh, Supersonic 2's for Sonic 2's music was pretty cool as well. This one, yeah, so I prefer the Sonic 3's Sonic, Supersonic music. Was pretty cool. But yeah, we are into that one boss. And I said, it is the easiest boss in any Sonic game. Seriously. All you gotta do is just pretend you're gonna go into the sand. But I'm using Super Sonic right now, so I can just jump into the sand and just stand in. He's not gonna do anything. And we are done with Act One's boss. Pretty, pretty quick and easy. Okay, cool. So we are into Act 2. Now, this is the interesting part. As I said, Sandor plus Act 2 is a reminiscence, or should I say, Sonic Adventures 2's Pyramid Cave is a reminiscence to Sandor plus Act 2. I love the murals, I love the actual idea of going into the cave and actually exploring. Now, the gimmick of Act 2 is much, much, much more different than Act 1. You got the doors going down, you gotta have to push these switches and use your speed and momentum to carry yourself onto the other side of the door and not only that you gotta realize that there are some ghosts in the air and no I do not believe that it is a gimmick that was copied from Mario Mario is a different franchise and they did their ghost gimmicks differently this franchise they did it much more smart I guess because you know with the ghosts in Mario they only chase you when you're not hiding I mean you're not looking at them this one they only chase you when you don't put the lever and even if you are looking at them they'll still keep them coming at you in the screen it's so annoying so what i tend to do a lot is that whenever i see a pulley i'll grab it if i mess up in one portion i'll go back and grab it there's no way for me to actually get attacked by these guys at night because they are so annoying especially when you're in these positions when you're trying to go up the sand and you're kind of defenseless it's really annoying so, I am back into the bonus stage, and yeah, I've shown you guys all the bonus stages in this game. The first bonus stage is this kind of gambling type of casino, you just jump in and then you just collect rings. The other bonus stage is you go into those little circle things and you keep them jumping up, collecting more power-ups from those little ball patches. And the last one, I think, no, I did not show that yet, I haven't shown that yet. It's quite difficult, but I'll still explain it to you guys. The third one is about... There's a capsule of lots of goodies in the thing, and the only thing you can do is jump from left to right, collect the power-ups, and there's lost springs, like multiple springs at the, at the bottom. And I like that one the best. I like the music, I like this simple creativity of this the Jack in the Pot type of thing, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Then rather doing this, because there's so much bumpers, I just... I don't like the actual idea of bumpers, as I said, in Carnival Night Zone is that bumpers are so annoying when you're trying to just bump from one place to another. And <laughs> quite frankly, I do enjoy Sonic 1 special stages, even though they have tons of bumpers. But yeah. I'm quite surprised that I didn't even try to skip this. Oh, I know why I'm doing this. It's because that I'm trying to get Super Sonic. Yeah. This actual idea, I was just trying to get more than 50 rings. Actually, try and get Supersonic. 
and Rammo. There we go. Yes, I will use Supersonic in this stage because this is pretty much one of the most annoying stages that I just cannot bear to sometimes play at times for the classic Sonic games. Much like, hmm, let's see. I'll say Oil Ocean Zone is pretty much equal to this. Well, they're both in, uh, enjoyable stages, but it's just one of those things that you pick up and play. Which, which stages would you actually pick up and play? And this is not the case. But yeah, as said in the Sonic 3 episode, is that Super Sonic's momentum in physics is much more overpowered than normal Sonic's, you know, in terms of momentum. You can jump more higher, he's much more faster, and you can easily reach platforms. The only thing is, is the controllability. And that's what I liked about Super Sonic in these games, is that you have less control, and it feels like so hybrid, like just don't know if you're actually controlling him properly or not and you just gotta learn the controls so first like normal sonic it's nice and easy because you are slowed down and you're trying to pick up pace as soon as you pick up force pace then you're in, yeah you're kind of in control but supersonic is like not really much in control until you've actually played this